Hi, Paul Beckwith at the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. So I'm continuing um, off on a previous video, and I'm talking about uh, some. I'm talking about sunspot activity and how small the effect is on the climate. The, these cold periods that we've been seeing over North America, for example, where we went into a deep freeze for you know almost a month, we were in the trough of the jet stream. The jet stream is made much, much wavier because we're losing Arctic sea ice and snow cover. The jet stream is slowing down as the Arctic is warming relative to the rest of the planet. And uh, we're getting these uh, large increases in the Way in, in the amplitude of the Rosby waves, the jet stream waves that are circling the planet. So the ridges are going up into the high Arctic, warming the Arctic in the middle of the winter, and the troughs are going deep down. And we had a trough covering North America for a long period of time, and it caused this very cold weather. Lots of the public try to try to come up with alternate reasons. Uh, you know, there's obviously fear, some fear of what's going on, and they you know, there's there's people, there's lots of fraudsters out there, and they try to attribute these changes in jet streams to whether they be polar shifts or harp or or um, glow or or uh, grand solar minimum or chemtrails. You know, you pick pick it, and I'll be talking about you know in, in a future video some of the mathematical modeling of these folks. Uh, this book is particularly relevant the mathematical modeling of zombies a lot of the work in here could be uh, uh, applied to modeling some of the crazy cockamamie ideas trying to explain climate change but anyway let's get back so the solar minimum um here's where we are right now cycle 24 okay the sun's putting out less energy than the previous um min maxima of the cycles this is 400 years of sunspot observation so there was a period here about 50, 70, 50, 70 years or so, where there was very few sunspots, even in the maximum. So there's some less energy coming out from the sun, another minimum here, and here's where we are now, but we're going into a, a cooling period, or at least we're going into a period that will be, where there will be slightly less sun, there'll be not much activity on the sun, there'll be less energy coming from the sun. But the impact on the climate, as I mentioned in the last video, is negligible compared to the warming that we get from greenhouse gases. Okay, so let's have a, let's let's continue on. Um, okay, so this is an image. This is from 1870 up to present day. Okay, so these this is the Oh, the uh, this is the average daily sunspot area percent of visible hemisphere. Okay, so there were counts done with telescopes here, and you can see the uh, so so the when there's sunspots, there's more energy coming out from the sun. So slightly more energy coming out. So this is a year of intense solar activity, and it's going in. So it goes in these cycles, eleven-year cycles. Okay, and then it looks like there's long, some longer cycles um, on the envelope. We're going into less sunspots, slightly less energy from the sun. This is this is a a, a um, the, the, this is an interesting way of displaying the activity. This is showing the latitude on the sun where the sunspots appear and how much area they take up as they go through the cycle. So this is a 1960 cycle, intense, lots of sunspots. This is the brightest. So they're forming around 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north. And over time, they're moving closer and closer towards the solar equator. And then the next cycle starts. You see some more appearing. And then there's some overlap of years between these cycles, but this is the progression. So here's where we are right now in the cycle. Okay, it's on the it's it's a weaker weaker cycle compared to here. Okay, so let's move on here. Okay, so how does the energy, how does the solar irradiance at the top of the atmosphere change? So this is the solar total solar irradiance, the TSI, 
top of the atmosphere, TOA, you'll often see the acronym, and the average is about 1361 watts per square meter. Okay, this is the monthly sunspot numbers counted, so this is actually the sunspot activity. Okay, there's more sunspots, so slightly more energy from the sun, fewer, more, fewer. These cycles, these 11 year cycles, here's where we are right now. And this is the, the energy as measured at the top of the atmosphere by satellites. So you can see the variation here from the peak to the trough. Okay, these blue lines, the separation of these blue lines is 0 0.25 watts per square meter. Okay, so it's a small change, right? The change in percentage, you divide 0 0.25 watts per square meter by 1361, roughly the average, and that's about 0.018%. Okay, it's... Uh, it's about two one hundredths of a percent, okay? It's very, very small uh, fluctuation. And as I showed you in the radiative forcings, the effect on climate change is very, very small, okay? It's maybe one part in 229, okay? Or, half of, or, 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 or even one part in half of that, one part in 450. You know, it's less than 0.1% change. So it's not the sunspot cycle that is changing the the climate it's the, the greenhouse gases you know co2 methane all of these things are are dwarfing they're changing we've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and ocean with our fossil fuel emissions and those impacts on climate and weather extremes etc on jet streams is way way higher it dwarfs anything the sun is simply not changing enough to warrant being given um, being attributed to any of these changes. So this is, the, this is the, key, um, the key result. It shows you how much the total solar radiance at the top of the atmosphere is changing compared to, you know, and it does, it fo is following these sunspot numbers, but the total change is much, much smaller and cannot be attributed, cannot, you can't say that it's causing the climate changes that we're seeing, the abrupt climate changes. Nowhere close. This is showing some actual satellite data. This is again, it's similar to the previous plot. This is the monthly sunspot number in the last three cycles. This is data from different satellites. Um, you know, some depending on the coverage, you don't have continuous coverage. Like the green would be one satellite here, you're missing it. The purple would be this one, and so on. Okay, different red is a third satellite, a newer satellite only giving information from 2003 onward. Okay, so we have all of this data. Okay, um, why is it at the top of the atmosphere? Okay, because we want it, this is before it's absorbed by any of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, before they're scattering from clouds, before anything else. So this is the top of the atmosphere curve, is the yellow curve, okay? If you assume an ideal black body for the sun of 50 to 50 degrees Celsius, it, you can generate this theoretical Planck black body curve here, and it tracks the yellow fairly good. Okay, the peaks, the peaks higher of the measured, but it, it's, a, it's a fairly good track. The red is what you would measure at the, um, that's at sea level, sunlight at sea level. Okay, so there's certain bands here where no light gets through. Here's the O2 band, uh, H2O, H2O, CO2, water vapor. Okay, so the selective absorption of the greenhouse gases cuts down the, what gets through the atmosphere to the surface, um, not uniformly, depends on the molecular nature, these are all basically triatomic molecules, two hydrogens and oxygen, three atoms, one carbon, two oxygens, okay, methane is CH4, but it's, uh, it's still five, it's an odd number, and that's important to be active in the, in the infrared. Okay, um, this is a good site, this is a NASA site on the sunspot cycle, okay, updated March 15th, 
2017, so very, very, 2017, sorry, it's not even March 15th yet. It's about, what, the 11th or 12th today? Um, okay, so this is a year ago. Um, the guy who put stuff on this site, there's a separate link. He, he's no longer, he retired from NASA, but this is showing the same sort of stuff. It gives you a bit of history. Galileo Galilei, 1610, invented the telescope, started looking at it with his telescope, started, one of the first things they started to do was counting sunspots. There's continuous observations at the Zurich Observatory and so on, but there are some records going back to 1610. Okay, so you just count the number of groups, count the number of sunspots in each group. There's details here, talks about the Maunder minimum, talks about how to read these butterfly diagrams where the sunspot start on the sun and how they move towards the equator. Okay, there's, you can, um, there's lots of more information on there. Here's some predictions for the cycle. So we do have some spread in the pre predictions, but we are predicting that they're going down. And if I click on this guy here, this is a very interesting site. Okay, um, this is, uh, so if you click on this link here, okay, uh, from the NASA site, again, you get this site just by, it's the NASA Solar Physics Marshall Space Flight Center. Okay, you can come to this page, click on this link here, and that's this page of Dr. David Hathaway. So I'm clicking on here, and here we are, and he's got information. You can click on any of these links, uh, discover the solar cycle. Um, here we go, the monitor minimum. He explains these butterfly diagrams. This is the magnetic fields, longitudinally average magnetic field from 75 now to now, 1975, so it shows how it flips. You know, you can see the blue here, and then the yellow here, the blue here, the yellow, and it's the yellow down here, blue, yellow there, and yellow is is uh, positive, up to positive 10 gauss of magnetic field, blue is negative 10 gauss, so it shows the magnetic field, which is high, either go coming out of the sun or going into the sun, depending on the convention of the plus minus, and you can see how it's changing at different locations of the sun. Um, why does this happen? There's, uh, in ba the Babcock in 61 proposed a dynamo model to explain the magnetic properties on the sun. So you'd have a solar minimum, and then you'd have the field lines rotating, and then you'd have some of them breaking off and what's left is pointing the other direction. So I won't go into all of the details here. If you're wondering why the sun flips polarity like this, there's information here. It's considered the underlying model, but the finer details are not well understood. Okay, so there's lots of stuff at this site here. You know, you can see, click here on solar cycles. Okay, that's what we looked at. Let's have active regions of the sun. Okay, it shows you how the magnetic fields all get twisted up in the spots. Okay, there's a sunspot. Sunspots are darker areas on the sun, but there's more energy. Their form of magnetic field lines emerge through the photosphere. Okay, and there's more information on them here. There's databases here where you, where you can get data on the number of sunspots, etc. Okay, um, predictions. I did want to show you predictions. So this is where we are. Okay, here we go. Discover the cycle predictions, okay? So there's different information on how these, how these, uh, you know, how the, the uh, solar cycle is gonna play out. Um, cycle 23, 24, you know, what they expect for 25, similar to 24, this one. Okay, so you can have a look at all that and get more information. Okay, so what's the net result of this? The net result of this is the uh, solar cycle, the sunspot activity changes on an 11-year cycle. It's only a small percentage of the watts per square meter coming out of the sun, 0.018%. It, it causes a small variation in solar forcing. It's not responsible for, the, for climate change that we're seeing. Thank you.